Greetings, my brothers and sisters, my friends and teammates, my companions, my fellow pilgrims on our journey to Zion. Grace and peace to you. This is James, and welcome to another session of our Maranatha Storytellers Church. As I've been praying about what I'm hearing the Holy Spirit say to the churches today, I really believe that our Father just wants us to focus in on the name Jesus this next week. And I ask the Holy Spirit to give me a, a definition for Jesus, specifically for this week, because we could talk for hours, days, weeks, months about who Jesus is. And so here's what I heard from the Spirit. Jesus is God's beloved Son. He came to earth to save us and restore us to God's family. Jesus is loving and compassionate, powerful and wise, and he will return soon. Maranatha. It's this picture of the story God's been writing from the beginning about how our Father has always wanted to glorify his Son in the presence of and the eyewitness of the nations. I asked the Lord for a specific name and scripture to focus on this week. And the Holy Spirit told me Jesus Messiah and the scripture is Acts chapter two, verses 29 to 36. My friends, I must speak to you plainly about our famous ancestor, King David. He died and was buried and his grave is here with us to this very day. He was a prophet, and he knew what God had promised him. God had made a vow that he would make one of David's descendants a king, just as David was. David saw what God was going to do in the future. So he spoke about the resurrection of the Messiah when he said, he was not abandoned in the world of the dead, his body did not rot in the grave. God has raised this very Jesus from death, and we are all witnesses to this fact. He has been raised to the right side of God, his Father, and has received from him the Holy Spirit as he had promised. What you now see and hear is his gift that he has poured out on us. For it was not David who went up into heaven. Rather, he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit here at my right side until I put your enemies as a footstool under your feet. All the people of Israel then are to know for sure that this Jesus whom you crucified is the one that God has made Lord and Messiah. I asked the Holy Spirit to teach me, what does this have to do with making disciples? And the Lord uh, spoke three words into my heart, redeemer, revealer, and ruler. So the first way that this uh, focus on disciple making can help us is uh, redeemer. Jesus is our redeemer. Redeem means to cover for someone else so their debt is paid and they become free. Our Redeemer lives. Jesus is the only one who can save us. We cannot save ourselves. Even better, we are eternal family in our Heavenly Father's kingdom. It's uh, very easy for us to slowly wander away from the Lord. There's a song by Casting Crowns called Slow Fade. And there's a song that says, my heart is prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. And so, brothers and sisters, there is an ongoing need for us daily, weekly, through every season of our lives to refresh our covenant of love for God. Not so that we can be saved again, not so that we uh, need to be baptized again, but so that we can continually come back to the heart of worship because it's all about Jesus, our Redeemer. The second word I got about making disciples is revealer. Jesus is our revealer. Reveal means to awaken others to what we do not know. The dragon is an evil prince of darkness 
deceiving the nations and manipulating them to follow his leadership, Jesus reveals God's truth, shines light into shadows, and shares wisdom. We know that we have a very formidable adversary in the church and in missions, and he is prowling around seeking whom he may devour. But the good news is that Jesus said, in this life we will have trouble, but we can take heart and have courage and hope because Jesus Christ has overcome the world. This is such an important revelation for us today to be reminded that Jesus Christ already has the victory. He has already claimed what belongs to him and he is preparing to come back. Jesus is the revealer of the mysteries of heaven. This was the name that King Nebuchadnezzar gave to God when Daniel interpreted his dream that none of his other magicians could interpret. Jesus brings the truth to us from God. He helps us understand what our Father wants us to understand and walk in. And aren't you glad today that we walk in truth? Aren't you glad today that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? The third word that I got for disciple making is ruler, that Jesus is the ruler. To rule means the authority to govern a people. When Jesus rose from the dead, our Father gave him all authority on earth and all spiritual realms. Jesus rules in heaven, and he will return in glory to judge the nations and inaugurate the next stage. Brothers and sisters, it doesn't feel like Jesus is, is ruling and reigning in the universe right now. And we look around at the world and we see all the catastrophes that happen around the world from hurricanes to earthquakes, when we look at the fallen nature of our governing leaders around the world, when we see the brokenness and the bondage in our generation, it doesn't feel like our peacemaking King of Kings is in charge. But brothers and sisters, we are people of revelation. We believe because the Bible teaches it. We believe because we believe that Jesus is the truth and that the truth is in the scriptures and that all of scripture is all we're ever going to need to understand the ways and the wisdom of our creator, our heavenly father. And so we take delight today knowing that Jesus Christ is in control, that he is ruling and reigning the earth and all spiritual realms from the third heaven right now at the right hand of the father, that he is interceding for us right now, the church and all missionaries to go forth and make disciples of all nations and that we have hope and that we have joy and that we have victory because Jesus Messiah is our redeemer, he is our revealer, and he is our ruler. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that we can pray at all times in the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you that we can pause in the middle of whatever we're doing and talk to you. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. We lift up Jesus, the Son of Man, because Jesus said that if we will lift him up, he will draw all nations to himself. Father, we thank you so much that each and every day that we wake up, there is fresh mercy and fresh grace for each day. And I thank you that today when we woke up, we are closer than anyone has ever been to the soon return of Jesus Christ. And we say glory, hallelujah. Blessed is Jesus who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He removes our dead hearts and makes us new. We are in need of a new heart every day. We are in need of, we are in need of ongoing revival. We are in need of ongoing refreshment. And so Heavenly Father, we posture ourselves afresh today to receive your resurrection power, to receive your living water from heaven. And we pray God that the salvation that you've given to us through Jesus will never lose its flavor and will never be diluted of its power. Jesus is King David's prophesied descendant. Jesus is the Messiah and Israel's true king. We lift up our brothers and sisters around the world who are Jewish. We lift up the nation of Israel today and we pray God for a spiritual awakening as unseen or unheard of as before. God, that Israel will awaken to know Jesus as Messiah and King. The grave could not prevail against Jesus. He is risen, raised, and reigning in heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your willingness to sacrifice for us. Thank you, Father, for raising your son from the dead. 
Thank you, Jesus, for appearing to over 500 eyewitnesses that wrote it down in scriptures so that we could have hope and we could have confidence in the revelation that you've given about your resurrection, your ascension, your intercessory prayer ministry in heaven today, and your promised return. Jesus ascended for a purpose, to send the Holy Spirit to dwell inside us and guide us. Holy Spirit, thank you for being Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you for dwelling with us and guiding us and counseling us and being our advocate and helper. Holy Spirit, we need you today more than ever. In the end, our Father will place every adversary under Jesus' feet, flawless victory. No matter what oppression and, and suppression that we experience in this age, no matter what spiritual warfare and spiritual battles and spiritual attacks that come in waves and waves against the sons and daughters of the kingdom of heaven, we know that every adversary of Jesus Christ will be placed under his feet and that he has all victory now and his victory will be complete and during judgment day and beyond. Hallelujah. Jesus demonstrates true love through his suffering and death at Calvary for our sake. Brothers and sisters, we are not alone in our suffering. And I praise the Lord today that we're able by the Spirit to share in the sufferings of Jesus that we may learn the same joy that Jesus experienced saving the world through suffering and death. Messiah means promised deliverer. Jesus is the Savior, Shepherd of all mankind. I pray, Father, for my brothers and sisters all around the world that those listening to this prayer will be reminded that you are our promised deliverer, that you are our strong tower and our refuge. You are our rescuer and our redeemer. Thank you for saving us and thank you for shepherding us as your flock. And thank you for guiding us into your return in the next stage. In Jesus' name, amen. As I conclude, there were just a few personal reflection questions that were on my heart. Number one, time for a heart check. Just how important is Jesus to my life? This is a very helpful, important question for us to ask from time to time. Just to ask, have we begun to wander away from the Lord? Has the saving work that he has done to rescue us and seal our names in the Lamb's Book of Life, has the enemy begun to get a foothold in our hearts and begun to dilute the power of this good news and this gospel in us? Second, have I fully surrendered everything to Jesus? Is he truly Lord of all? So it's a reminder to take a step back from the day to day and the things that we want and desire, our plans and what's on our calendars, and to have a check and say, is everything in my life, does it belong to the Lord? Is there anything I'm holding back? Is there anything I'm keeping to myself? Is there anything that I need to identify by the Spirit? And Holy Spirit, we, get, we welcome you to come in and to examine everything in us and expose anything that doesn't belong. Third, in this next week, how can I rearrange my calendar to spend more time with my Salvation King? In some cases, this means canceling an appointment and setting apart that time to be in the Lord's presence. In other cases, it is learning to practice the presence of God during our normal day, from washing dishes to taking care of kids to working our jobs, to resting, to entertaining, to traveling. God is Emmanuel. The Holy Spirit is Emmanuel, God with us. He never leaves us. And so sometimes this rearranging of our calendar is simply inviting the Holy Spirit into everything that we're doing and being mindful of his presence and practicing the skill of listening to his voice. Jesus said to pray at all times in the Holy Spirit. How do I practice his presence every day? And this is what I leave you with. We can practice the presence of God. We can pray at all times in the Holy Spirit. We can pray without ceasing. It's not by our strength. It's not by our knowledge. It's not by our righteous works. It is by our surrender to his Lordship. It is inviting Jesus to baptize all of our desires with his blood and to be made anew in his spirit to practice the presence of the Holy Spirit in everything. Wherever we go, whatever we do, whatever we desire, whatever, whatever we dream, inviting the Holy Spirit to have all and be all in everything. I love you. I'm grateful to be your friend. I'm praying for you. Much love and grace. Maranatha.